Hey, folks, welcome to the Camp Constitution Report with your host, Hal Shirtliff. This blog or uh, report is uh, posted both on our face, I should say, our Rumble and YouTube channel. And the audio version will be on our Potomatic uh, flagship. You can also pick it up on Amazon and, mm -hmm. uh, boy, Amazon, Spotify, iHeart, and a whole bunch of others. Brought to you by Camp Constitution, which, among other things, runs a week-long family camp. And we have a weekend camp coming up at the end of this month uh, in uh, Camp Sentinel in beautiful Tuftonboro, New Hampshire. For more information, please visit our website, campconstitution.net. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Rumble page, and our Podomatic uh, page. Well, we have a, a guest on uh, here. Um his name is E. Ray Moore, somebody that I, I've heard I've known about for many years. He is a pioneer, along with Sam Bloomfeld, in exposing the wickedness of government education. And he is the head or founder of the Exodus Mandate. So welcome, um, Ray. Thank you, Hal. And uh, one day, uh, it's on my bucket list. I hope to make a trip to Camp Constitution. <laughs> Well, we'd and, love to have you. And I, I, you told me that you have some ancestry here in New Hampshire. And yeah. you said Peterborough. Yeah, my uh, family were originally from Peterborough. Uh, and they a branch of them broke away and immigrated to South Carolina in 1830. Well, we may have some lineage because my dad was born, lived in Peterborough with my grandfather and grandmother. So uh, maybe we we're like 10th cousins or something like that. But... Yeah, um, yeah, they Tell, came uh, on in uh, 1704. Wow, that's great. Yeah, we, our lineage goes back a little bit further. But th what's more important is our lineage of liberty and freedom, and that's uh, what we're about. So tell us about the Exodus mandate, if you can. What prompted you to create it, and uh, what, 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 what are you doing lately with it? Well, well Sam Blumenfeld was one of my uh, forebears. Uh, I was reading his books uh, before... I launched it, and I didn't want to venture off into some new territory. You know, when you start something fresh and new, you got to be really careful that you stand on good historical, That's right. constitutional, and theological ground. So I was pretty confident that what I was doing was the right thing. And I had read Sam's books, and I knew him pretty well. I was reading Rush Dooney's books that were dealing oh, yes. with some of the same issues. J. Gretchen Machen, I didn't read him until later, but there were a lot of great scholars who talked about the era of state-run, state-sponsored public education. We launched a group called Frontline Ministries, which had that agenda in it in 1994. And we're getting ready to celebrate Friday, 30 years of that ministry. A couple of years later, we uh, launched Exodus Mandate Project, and that's exodusmandate.org, and it is a <clears throat> crusade or campaign under Frontline Ministries, Inc. It does not have any independent uh, legal status. It's a, cr a project under Frontline Ministries, but it's kind of become better known and a little bit nationally known, so I have a awkward thing of having to promote both of them at the same time but that's what we're better known for and uh, we're celebrating our anniversary on friday night here in columbia south carolina oh. a banquet that's great you know what's fascinating is that so many people who claim to be christians or professing christians are more than happy to send their children into the hands of non-christians in this case, the government schools, and the Bible is quite clear. When you read, um, you read Proverbs um, that the beginning of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and we wonder why so many fr children of Christian parents lose the faith. Not only do they lose the faith, but they become aggressively anti-Christian. And so, uh, from a bi biblical perspective, outside of that one passage. Uh, give us some more uh, reasons why we need to get our children out of the government schools and well, as quickly the, as possible. The, the scriptures are unambiguous on this question. There's no text that would justify Christians 
and sending their children into pagan schools to be indoctrinated. But the one text that many use or try to justify <clears throat> is the salt and light text in Matthew 5, 13 and 14, where Jesus said you are to be salt and light. That is not a command to put little children in harm's way in pagan schools, but that's mm -hmm. what they use. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's twisting the scriptures to say what Jesus didn't mean. All he meant in that text was whatever context we're in, wherever we live, we need to behave as Christians to be salt and light. But it doesn't mean to put children in harm's way and pagan schools. And I have to deal with that text more than anything else. It's the biggest justification that lazy people use <clears throat> to justify putting their kids in public school. Uh, the, there are so many texts, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to, 19, 4 to 9, Ephesians 6, 4, um, uh, Matthew 19, uh, 14, where Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them or hinder them, for as such is the kingdom of God. And you know who, who he was talking to? He was talking to his disciples. They were trying to keep the children away when he was speaking to the people. He said, stop hindering the little children, disciples. He was speaking to his right-hand men. And honestly, uh, Hal, it's the pastors that are doing this today. Uh, our conservative pastors are using salt and light to justify what I call disobedience to the express teaching of scripture. So we uh, base our arguments on biblical grounds. And of course, uh, if you didn't have the Bible, we know that the public schools now are thoroughly pagan and Marxist and leftist, and they're hurting children. And you shouldn't be putting little children in, in a dangerous place. But hey, I, Ray, to, I, yeah. I just want to maybe interject a second. Uh, some years ago, I was having a discussion with a fellow believer. By the way, he's an incredible Christian man. I don't question his commitment to Jesus Christ one bit. And he used that same argument that, you know, we need to put our children in the government schools so they could be basically missionaries and so forth. That may be a case for a mature college age person. But for a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, uh, but I used this analogy. I said, what would you think of me if on the way to church every Sunday, I dropped my children off at the Unitarian Sunday School? I said, would you question my commitment to Jesus Christ? And he said, well, of course he would. And I said, why would you do that? He says, well, Unitarians don't believe what we, they're not Trinitarians, they're socialists and what have you. They don't believe uh, anything that we believe. I said, Correct. I says, why would you want to put your child in the Unitarian schools five days a week? As Sam Blumenfeld used to call government schools Unitarian prep schools. They really were. Uh, they, that, that is a very good argument. If you know the history of the system, it started in, in Boston in around 1837, 1840. And Horace Mann, who is considered today by everybody as a father of public education, was a Unitarian. That's right. And uh, so uh, they. what happened was the U.S. was primarily a Protestant nation. And in the 1830s, a lot of Catholics started immigrating into New England, New York, Philadelphia. <clears throat> and it spooked the uh, Protestant clergy. They could see they were losing their uh, domination over the culture. And so Horace Mann kind of sold them the idea that we need to create government schools and mm -hmm. we'll let you keep your pet uh, theological doctrines at home or in your churches and we'll teach the Ten Commandments and things like that in the public schools, but they wouldn't teach the Trinity. Well, the Catholics saw through it and they started a parochial That's right. uh, Catholic school system. And, it, and the Protestants were stuck with that system. And it's only now in our lifetime that we started abandoning it in any any numbers. So it's a it's a pagan system now, but it was at least once Unitarian and did believe in God, but it wasn't the God of the Trinity. I think Sam Blumenfeld, and by the way, uh, we have his archives on our website, campconstitution.net, and anyone is welcome to download and re-upload Sam's uh, incredible work. But yeah, he... Um, he mentioned that the Unitarians believe that you can perfect man through government, where we Christians believe you perfect man through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, before accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
And then uh, that's how you perfect mankind. And But today's Unitarians are a whole different, even back then, and I believe most of them were sincere. They weren't necessarily, they were sincerely doing what they could to destroy Trin Trinitarianism. That's no question about that. But they believe that. Uh, but today we see that all of their plans to create this wonderful government system to end the poverty and disease and all of the evils of mankind haven't worked. And our, uh, our Rush Dooney would point out that the product of government schools today is the product they want. They want illiterate uh, children. They can't read. They can't write very well. They can't think for themselves. He said, and uh, I'm paraphrasing, in his numerous writings, he said, if they wanted, if they wanted, they see how bad things are, they could have easily changed things. And our late friend Sam Blumenfeld spent his most of his adult life, at least from the early 60s on, to try to get schools to reintroduce phonics, intensive phonics. And then he realized they have no intention of ever bringing phonics back. And he used to write letters to, uh, uh, pre uh, to mayors of big cities uh, uh, and offering to taste, give me the worst school in your city and I will turn it around in two years. And he was, if he got a response, it was thank you, but no thank you. It was, Corey Booker was one of, he, at that time he was mayor of Newark. And he said, and he had a game plan. He had teachers that wanted to come in. You know, there was a budget that needs to be done and um, but no takers. So that's when he realized that this, the product that we have today is the product they want. Yeah, they want them a dumbed down culture so they can manipulate them at election time. You know, and so if people can read and write and think and read the Bible, they're not easily manipulated by the left when it comes to voting. Yeah, it's a mess. Let me put so my what uh, out. We got a web page called exodusmandate.org, and I would love to have your audience go there and check us out, exodusmandate.org. And I'm also chairman of the board for a group that's based in San Diego, which is a sister ministry to Exodus Mandate called publicschoolexit.com. Amen. And they've got a lot of materials, uh, more, more sources. And if people are interested in getting started in homeschooling or Christian schooling, they can go there for a lot of material. If they want to come to contact me about my books, my videos, my tracks, uh, they can contact me at exodusmandate at gmail.com and we can send out materials on a digital file or even printed material. That's wonderful. Yes, you were very gracious. You sent us some materials that we that we handed out at Camp Constitution's uh, 16th annual family camp just to, uh, yeah. last July. And the stuff was gobbled up. I mean, uh, people were really enjoying the reading it, so I, I do well, appreciate that. I'll you that. some more if you, if you need it. Uh, Absolutely. Very, I would I would love some more, yes. I'm very good friends with Alex Newman, who speaks at your camp. Oh, quite yes. A bit. And I've known Reverend Stephen Kraft, uh, but haven't had a lot of contact with him in, in recent years. But we used to work together, oh, 15, 20 years ago more. So I'm getting back in contact with him. But I really would uh, love to come to New Hampshire and and I'll make a side trip off to Peterborough to see my old family homestead. Well, let's get you up here next year. Let's make it happen. Our, our, our I guess it's 17th annual family camp. I think it's 17th. It's uh, the same week as it was this year, uh, July. I think I think it's the 12th Sunday afternoon to Friday morning, the 12th to the 17th, I think, or 18th. Uh, and you can learn more about that on our website. So thank you for coming on to do this uh, short interview. And again, thank you for your work over the years. You've no doubt influenced hundreds of thousands of people. And again, uh, exodusmandate.org, where if you can get incredible resources, if uh, we shouldn't be thinking about government getting your children out, you should be getting them out, period. Not giving, thinking about it. But uh, we uh, we do say pray that uh, there's, there's homeschool groups all over the country. You probably, there may be some, in your own neighborhood you don't even know about it so uh and you get plenty of resources from the exodus mandate so thank you ray for all your efforts and until uh we hopefully we see each other uh hopefully in the next um within the next year or so thank you for having me and i'm glad to finally meet up with you and i've followed Amen. your ministry for a long time thank you we appreciate it god bless bye-bye